For 30 years, I've lived in the rugged coastal inlet of Atkatsam Howe Sound, just a short way from the city of Vancouver. But the waters of my glacier-carved home are just one small part of the larger Salish Sea. And recently, I've begun to explore the other corners of this vast marine body. The marshes and channels of the Fraser River Delta near Vancouver, the rugged fjord waters of Desolation Sound in the north, the dry coastal bluff shores of the Gulf Islands, tidal rapids in Puget Sound in the south, and the broad reaches of the Strait of Juan de Fuca. And wherever I've gone, I've been struck by the rich and diverse life of these different shores. It's left me wondering, why is the Salish Sea so rich with life? The Salish Sea is the largest inland sea between Alaska and Mexico on the west coast of North America. It straddles the border between the United States and Canada and is separated from the open Pacific Ocean by Vancouver Island and the Olympic Peninsula. The sea stretches from Olympia, Washington in the south to Campbell River, British Columbia in the north. Recently, I've been learning what scientists know about the Salish Sea, and their work points to several unique ingredients that make the Salish Sea rich with life. The first key ingredient, it turns out, is that the Salish Sea has an incredibly convoluted shape that produces an abundance of different habitats. So that while the Salish Sea measures 400 kilometers north to south, it has an astonishing 7,600 kilometers of shoreline. That long, irregular shoreline produces a myriad of protected bays, islands, narrow passageways, and deep basins that create a blizzard of different habitats for life. For example, protected bays shelter waterfowl from storms and waves, while their sand bottoms are home to dense colonies of burrowing clams and shrimp. Eelgrass meadows in these protected bays thrive just offshore, rich habitat for fish and crabs. Meanwhile, river mouths host salmon runs, as well as broad salt marshes, the most productive of all marine habitats, home to waterfowl, juvenile salmon, and a blizzard of other life. Rivermouth tidal flats, on the other hand, are rich with tiny invertebrates, and so are key feeding grounds for many shorebirds. Exposed rocky shores along headlands are a completely different habitat, and home to mussels, sea stars, and a host of other species. Where tidal currents are squeezed through narrow channels forming rapids, kelp beds thrive. And so too the life that clings to them. And broad open waters and deep basins are home to a host of open water fish and the birds and marine mammals that feed on them. But there's another reason that contributes to the rich life of the Salish Sea, a wealth of rivers. Rivers carry nutrients such as silica and iron to the sea, fertilizing the growth of tiny plants or phytoplankton that are the foundation of the marine food web. And the Salish Sea is fed by a multitude of rivers, surrounded as it is by raincoast mountains that strip moisture from Pacific storms. But the giant is the Fraser, the second largest river on the entire Pacific coast of North and South America. In fact, so much fresh water pours into the Salish Sea that scientists view the entire inland sea as an estuary, a place where river and ocean mix. Its waters vary from fresh to brackish to salty, creating more diverse habitats where unique species can thrive. And these rivers do even more for the Salish Sea. Over thousands of years, rivers have built broad flats of sand and mud at the shore, upon which wildly productive marshlands grow, home to so much life. 
And yet it's truly amazing that in addition to delivering nutrients and building marshlands, rivers do even more. They drive the entire circulation system of the Salish Sea. And here's how that happens. As the lighter river water flows out over the denser seawater, it creates a mound of fresh water that is pushed from behind and so flows towards the open ocean. But the freshwater plume mixes and drags seawater with it, driving deep offshore Pacific water, rich in nutrients such as nitrogen, to flow into the Salish Sea. So rivers not only fertilize the sea with their own waters, but draw in nutrient-rich waters from the great depths of the giant Pacific Ocean. And there's a third ingredient that makes the Salish Sea rich with life. Big tides and tidal currents. Driven by the constantly changing tug of moon and sun, the Salish Sea has twice daily tides, with a rise and fall of three to four meters, but sometimes as much as five. It's such a gift to walk ashore at low tide, witnessing seafloor life close up that otherwise is hidden from view under meters of seawater. And big tides create powerful currents. The large rise and fall of the sea drives a lot of seawater to flow back and forth each day throughout the Salish Sea. And because of the dense archipelago of islands in parts of the Salish Sea, these tidal currents are forced through narrow channels and over shallow submarine sills, creating turbulence and tidal rapids. These tidal rapids are key to the richness of the Salish Sea because they bring deep nutrient-rich water to the surface fertilizing the growth of tiny marine plants or phytoplankton that are the foundation of the rest of the marine web of life. I've stood on the shores of these rapids and witnessed the rich life that clings to their walls and hunts their fast waters. And the mixing that occurs in these rapids fertilizes the waters downstream for tens of kilometers, making these areas the feeding grounds for all sorts of life, from herring and salmon, to ducks, to sea lions, orca, and humpback whales. Is it any wonder that eight million people choose to call the Salish Sea home? And whether we live in Seattle, in Vancouver, or any of the smaller communities spread out along its shores, we're all neighbors of the Salish Sea. And most of us count our blessings to live beside such beautiful waters, so rich with life. I've come to see the Salish Sea as a rich mixing bowl of river and ocean where the nutrients of mountains and the deep offshore Pacific are stirred together by tidal currents into life-giving waters. I see too that this big sprawling inland sea is a single interconnected body of life bound together by ocean currents and filled with extraordinary wild neighbors going about the business of their lives that the Salish Sea still holds the vigor to support such life is a great gift to us all. My deep hope is that we rise to the challenge, the challenge of being the good neighbors that our wild cousins deserve, and so honor this gift, their home place and ours. <laughs>